Hello, my Algebra 2 students. I'm so excited I get to finally make a video for you guys. Uh, today we're going to be talking about parent functions and parent graphs. Uh, and these are really important because I remember being in uh, Algebra 2 and being told, oh, learn these parent graphs, just memorize how they work and, and you'll be fine. And I kept thinking to myself, no, I'll just use an XY chart every single time I go to graph. Let me just tell you, I have since developed my lazy method of math, right? I'm lazy, I'm gonna do the easiest thing possible. Memorize these multipl or multiplication tables. You can tell I've been working with junior high kids. Memorize these parent functions and you're gonna be much better off, much better off, okay? So we're gonna dive right into these guys. And uh, if you're in my class and you're watching this video, make sure that you grab a piece of paper, not the packet that I gave you out. Uh, we'll get into that later. You just for right now need a, a piece of paper that you're gonna wanna reference over and over again, okay? All right, so let's dive right in. All right, so taking a look at these guys, the very first thing that we're gonna talk about is our very first function, our very first function that we learned. I bet you learned this in algebra one. It looks like this, y equals x. y equals x, this is our number one. Uh, what that means is when x is negative two, y is also negative two. When x is negative one, y is negative one. When x is zero, y is zero. One, one, two, two. This is our easiest function, right? Easiest function. That looks like this guy right here. Over one, up one, over two, up two, down one, over one, and so on and so forth, right? So we've got this guy, looks like this, okay? Looks like that. So, there we go. Okay, so, and it looks like that, right? Goes down, it's a, basically a line, all right? Now, why is this important? Well, we go back to this, this XY chart, right? And we look at, naturally, I have no idea where my erasers are. Okay, I get so excited to record that I don't actually like figure out where everything is. All right, so it's this guy plus three, right? That guy plus three. So again, we have our XY chart and you don't have to write this part down, I just want you to see. So if we have negative one <clears throat> and we plug it into here, we would end up with two. And if we have zero, we would end up with three. If we have one, we would end up with four, right? So going back over to our graph, we are gonna do over negative one, up two, right? Over uh, zero, up three, over one, up four, so on and so forth. It's gonna look like this. Guys, all it is is the exact same graph, that over one, up one with that same exact slope. However, do you notice it's moved up three? Well, that makes sense because it's on our y axis and this is, if you remember our linear equations, that's our y intercept, right? Um, so we are able to manipulate this graph by moving it up or down. Um, plus would be up and minus would be down, right? So that, that's pretty basic. All right, let's talk about one that's a little bit more complicated. We are gonna talk about our second parent graph today. And that, that graph looks like this. Y equals absolute value of X, absolute value of X. Again, if we did an XY chart for this, and when we do XY charts on all of these today, I'm gonna to use the same numbers, negative one, or I'm sorry, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If I plug in negative two to here, the absolute value of negative two is two. Negative one is this, zero is this, one and two, right? So guys, if you have, uh, and, and it would be a good idea if you have graph paper to kind of graph these out to take a peek at these, right? Uh, as, I'm, as I'm doing this, or you can watch the whole video and then figure out what you wanna write down, either way. All right, so negative two, we go over negative two, up two. Over negative one, up one, zero, zero, one, two. So guys, this is our very second parent graph. This looks like a V. So any time, so you definitely wanna write this down y equals absolute value of x. This is our default parent graph. Now I'm going to talk about how we can manipulate this graph, but the idea here is if you ever see a v on a graph, you know it's an absolute value graph, okay? So let's talk about how we can manipulate that. So if we've got, uh, let's say it's all of this garbage. It's this guy, right? Oop, probably helps if I, let me do that. There we go. Uh, it's, so it's this guy, but now I'm going to say plus three, plus three, right? This is going to be really similar to that line that we just did in that if I do negative two, that's going to be two, right? And so I would get five. Negative one, that's going to be one plus three is four. Zero plus three is three. One is four. And this is five. So again, we're going to have this exact same graph, but it's going to go up here and look like this. So we've got that basic parent graph here. 
it, and it looks like this. However, it's been moved up three, up. So this guy right here tells us up, down. Of course, if it's plus, it's up. If it's down, it's gonna be a negative, right? Easy peasy, seems pretty, pretty uh, simple, straightforward, right? Now, let's say that we do this. We have that same graph, which you can see that I have graphed right here, right? Uh, but this time, instead of this plus three, I'm gonna do this. Y equals X minus two plus three. Now, we could sit here and we could do an XY chart for it. And for the very first one, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make you suffer through it. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. All right, so if we have a negative two here, we would have negative two minus two, right? That's a negative four, because we add the opposite. Absolute value of negative four is four, plus three is seven. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with a negative one. Negative one and negative two is negative three. Negative three plus, or the absolute value of negative three is three. Three plus three is six. All right, same idea here, zero minus two. Zero minus two is negative two. The absolute value of negative two is two, plus three is five. All right, let's do one. One minus two is negative one. The absolute value of negative one is one, plus our three is gonna be four. All right, so two minus two is zero, plus three is three. Guys, so this is why we do, we, you need to learn your parent graphs. Take a look here. If I were to graph all these things, over negative two, up seven. Over negative one, up six. Over zero, up five. Over one, up four. Over two, up three. So guys, what I've just graphed here is a line, right? But we know an absolute value is a V. So it's really important you know your parent graphs because you need to know where to start, right? These are not the, these, these should not have been the numbers that we picked, all right? So let's keep going though and make sure. So I'm gonna erase these guys just so you can see. So this is three. If I put in three here, I would get one and that would give me four. If I put in four here, that would give me two, that would give me five. Oh, I see. So we go over three, we go up four, over four, up five. Bam, now we see where our line is curving. Do you see that? Our line is curving. And you'll notice from our parent graph, which started at the origin of zero, zero, we have gone up three and over in this direction, two. Oh, that's how this works. Re remember, we know that this is our up down. This guy is our up down. This is our up down. This guy right here, you gotta do the opposite of it. Do you see that I moved in the positive direction too? That, and this is a negative, you gotta do the opposite there. So it's gonna be opposite of this, okay? And that's the left, right. So you go in the positive direc direction if it's a negative, if it's a negative, or if it's a positive, then you go in the negative direction, right? What this is telling us is this very important part here, okay? That's our vertex of our uh, absolute value graph. I think it's called a vertex, I'm not sure. I know it is in a parabola, I just don't remember. So in, um, so this is our, our vertex right here. You need to know where that is. Otherwise, if you just do an X, Y chart, you're gonna be graphing just that line, okay? So, all right, so we've got um, opposite being the left, uh, of that guy being our left and right, right? So we've got these things. So what you can do is say your vertex is gonna be, I gotta look that up. I don't know if it's vertex or not, but it's two, three. Meaning that if you have a, a graph that looks like this, you know to go over two, up three, and then do your pattern. Your pattern is over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, right? Math is all about patterns, learn those patterns. So if we were to take this guy and we were to say y equals absolute value of x uh, plus seven minus three, right? This, we're gonna do the opposite of this guy. Let's straighten that up. Opposite of this is negative seven. Regular of this is gonna be three. So when we come over to our graph, we know that our vertex is gonna be over negative seven, up three, right? Over negative seven, up three. Then we do our pattern. Over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one. Just like this, we've got our V way faster than doing an X, Y chart, way faster, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You remember when we've got a line here? We have a line, y equals x, right? We already talked about how that works. 
If I say minus three, that line is gonna go start on our um, Y axis and it's gonna go down three, right? What about in front of that one? That is, if you remember our slope, right? That tells us if it's gonna be like this or if it's gonna be super steep or if it's gonna be super flat like that, whatever. Um, that's our slope, right? Same thing applies for this, uh, for our absolute value, except instead of slope, it's gonna be, is it nice and skinny or is it fat? Nice and skinny, fat, right? So like if I had this, I would have a two here, right? We would know that it would go up two over one. So it's gonna be pretty steep, right? Let's, let's apply that same idea to our vertex here, or our vertex, I'm sorry, our uh, absolute value. So we have two absolute value of X, two absolute value. Well, let's do an X, Y chart so we can figure out how this works. Uh, we've got negative two. So I know that our vertex, because I don't have a plus anything here, plus or minus inside here or up here. So I know our vertex is gonna be at zero. Um, so we're gonna just use these points so that you can see. So negative two would be two, two times two is four, negative one would be one, so that's gonna be two, zero is zero, one is two, and two is four. All right, so we come over and we look at our, this guy here, and we graph out all these points. Over negative two, up four, over one, up two, and you can see that it's a little bit steeper. You see how that's steeper? Okay, so because before it was like, it was like this guy right here, right? Over one, up one, over one. Up. It was like that, right? And so now it's, it's become a little bit more narrow, right? All right, so what that is called, this guy right in front here is called your A. And your A tells you if it's gonna be steep or uh, it's skinny or fat, okay? Why am I telling you all this? Because it applies now to our next parent graph. So guys, we have two parent graphs now. We have Y equals X, that's a line. We have Y equals absolute value X, that's a V, okay? Our next one, if you remember this from algebra one, is Y equals X squared. Y equals X squared. Let's do our, let's do our X, Y chart so we can see what our parent graph looks like. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Guys, if you remember back to quadratics, so we, um, we're, we're gonna be plugging negative two into here. Make sure you're doing that with parentheses because this, just a friendly reminder, this squared equals nine, this squared equals negative nine, right? Friendly reminder on that. So you gotta be using your parentheses when we're plugging things in. All right, so y equals four, right? Let's do negative two. y equals negative one squared, y equals one, right? So we got four, we got one, we have zero. Now we plug in one, that's gonna be one, that's gonna be four, right? So we take a look at this. Now we're gonna graph these guys, right? Let's graph these guys. So the way that it looks is we've got a pattern involved here. You go over one, up one, that's one, one, right? This guy, over negative one. Then from here, you go over one, up three, because two, the two squared is gonna be four, okay? Two squared is gonna be four. So that pattern again is over one, up one, over one, up three, right? And when we do it like that, we get this lovely little parabola. Lovely little parabola. Now those same rules that we talked about for absolute value apply for parabolas as well. These are parabolas, but mind you, when you have a squared, y equals x squared, when you have that, that's quadratic, okay? So in quadratic equations, we, we graph a parallel here, right? A parallel, <laughs> a parabola, meh. Uh, we graph a parabola. All right, so why is this important? Well, the same thing that with those absolute values, if I add two here, you're gonna take this parent graph and you're gonna move it up two. If I do minus seven here, you're gonna move it down seven. Same idea for this guy, y equals x minus three squared plus two. Again, we do the opposite of this. So make sure you're writing this part down. Opposite, regular. So the vertex is three, two, three, two. Guys, that's important because if you wanted to just do an X, Y chart, you need to know where that, that vertex is so you know where to graph, right? The other delightful thing about these guys is they're symmetrical. And if you remember back to algebra one, this is your axis of symmetry right in here, right? Meaning that what happens on one side happens on the other side. So the most important part of a quadratic equation is this vertex right here, that vertex right there. Because if you know that, you can do, you can pick a couple points on this side and then just bloop, copy it over to the other side. So let's take a look at this. This is also why this is called vertex form, vertex form, okay? 
um, is because you can easily identify that vertex, right? So we know that our vertex is, right there, my dog is tripping over my camera. Mm. Okay, so we know that our vertex is, is, looks like that guy, all right? Now, just like with uh, the absolute value ones, we, sometimes there's gonna be an A in front of here, okay? And that A can be, and I should have mentioned this on, uh, this applies also to the absolute values. If that A, so if your A is greater than one, okay, greater than one, it's gonna be fat. Nope, skinny, I always mess that up. It's gonna be skinny, sorry. Skinny, okay? If your A is less than, no, that's a greater than, God, off my mark today, less than one, that's gonna be fat, okay? That's gonna be fat. So let's take this guy as an example, right? Um, let, actually, let's, we're gonna go back to a simple one. I think that'll be easier. So now we know how to manipulate graphs moving them left, right, up, and down, right? The, the key here, though, is going to be uh, that, that fat and skinny, fat and skinny. So let's do this. Y equals one-half X squared. Guys, if you don't already know, this lesson will be, or this unit will be much easier if you either have a graphing calculator, I don't recommend it, or bring a laptop or a device and use Desmos. Dot com. You can graph from um, you can graph any of these equations on Desmos.com. Okay, so let's talk about how that works then. For these guys, we have one half x squared. Y equals. Oh, we're gonna do an x y chart. X y right, and we know that there's no like plus here or minus here or anything like that. So we know it's gonna be our vertex is gonna be zero zero. So negative two, negative one, zero one and two. If we do these guys all out like this. We get y equals one half negative two squared. Negative two squared is four, right? So y equals one half times four, which equals two. Now we gotta do the same thing for this, negative one. Negative one squared is one. That's gonna be one half, right? Because one times one half will give us that. All right, zero squared, if I throw a zero in here, zero squared is zero, anything times zero, zero, and that's our vertex, right? Which means if this is our vertex, guys, this is all gonna be copied onto the other side. If I do one, one squared is one, one times one is one half, right? Two squared is four, four times one half is two. Beautiful, all right, so, so let's take a look at this guy. Now, one half, that's our A, because it comes in front of our X squared, right? That's our A. That is less than one, which means it's gonna be fat. And when I say fat, I mean it looks like this. I, there are actually technical terms, and I have tutoring students that I say fat and skinny, and they say, my teacher says you have to say it this way. I think it's like stretched and compact. I can't remember, so fat and skinny works for me. Just fat and skinny, that's all I wanna know. Uh, zero, zero right here, right? Now we go over one, up one half, bam, over right here. Over two, up two, right there. Right there. All right, so we can see that this is already gonna be fatter than our other parabola. Because remember, our old pattern was over one, up one, over one, up three. So do you see how it's much, it's much fatter, right? Instead of like this. All right, so then let's try a skinny one. This is gonna be two. Okay, let's try two. Let's see what the difference is here. X, Y, we've got negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Negative two squared is four times that is eight. Negative one squared is one times two is two. Zero is zero, one is uh, two, and then this is gonna be eight. So we go over here, we graph this bad boy, we get zero, we go over negative two, up eight, bam. Over negative one, we go up two, zero, this, and I can copy over to the other side, so bam. Do you see how that one's much, much that one is much skinnier. I think that this is the one that's called stretch because we stretch it out, right? So, um, so that A is really important whether it is the quadratic equation or if it's your vertex. So until you get used to these patterns, I would say if you have an A, that's when you should do your XY chart, but you need to know where your vertex is to know which numbers to pick. That make all sense? All that, <laughs> does that all make sense? Hopefully that is the case. And this could just be a refresher for quadratics, right? Uh, because I think if you've got those quadratics down, you'll be just fine. All right, so if you get something like this, y equals x plus three. Let's 
do this. Y equals two X plus three squared plus seven, okay? What we would know is opposite of this is negative three, regular this is seven, okay? So we know our vertex is gonna be negative three, seven. So we go over negative three up seven right here, right? So what we can do now, if, if we did not have an A here, right? If that, we, we would just go over one, up one, over one, up three, right? Over one, up one, over one, up three. Um, but since we do have an A, it's a good idea to do an XY chart, but I am lazy. We don't have to do five numbers for an XY chart. All we gotta do is pick this guy here, negative two, negative one, and then copy it to the other side, right? So if we do that, we get two, negative two plus three squared plus seven, right? This is gonna be one, one squared is one times two is two, so two plus seven is nine. So we go over negative two, up nine right there. Bam, that means we're gonna go on this side over one, up two. All right, so this, uh, now we're gonna do negative one, right? Negative one plus three is two, two squared is four. Four times uh, two is gonna be eight, plus seven, what, okay. We're gonna go all the way up to 15. Now remember our quadratic pattern was over one, up one, over one, up three. Well, now we're going over one, up two, over one, up six. That's because we're multiplying that over one, up one, over one, up three by two, right? That's, that's what we're doing here. Well, that was terrible. We're multiplying it by two, okay? So, uh, so look for those patterns in these parent graphs. All right, what do I want you to walk away with today? I want you to know your parent graphs. Y equals X, Y equals X squared, Y equals absolute value of X. And I want you to know how to manipulate those by doing plus minus, right? And, and know how those A's work. We actually have a couple of other graphs that I want you to, and the reason being is when we get into graphing, we're gonna be talking about things called asymptotes, which your lines cannot cross. So this is an easier way to do these. Um, there are a couple of other parent graphs that I want to talk about too. Y equals uh, square root of X, okay? This is manipulated just like the other ones, but we've got to first figure it out. I'm going to pick easy numbers. I'm not going to do my usual negatives because it's a square root and I don't want to have to graph decimals, right? So <clears throat> instead what I'm going to do is pick zero, one. Uh, actually, let's do this. We can't have any negatives underneath here, right? So it has to at least be zero. And the square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. The square root of the next one would be four, right? A perfect square. So the square root of four is two. And then the next perfect square is nine, which is three, right? You see this pattern that's developing over here? Four, this would be 16, okay? So uh, when we go to graph that, what that's gonna look like is zero, zero, one, one, over uh, four up two over nine up three. So it's gonna look like this, Shwink. okay? Now there's no arrow over here because it can't be a, it can't be a negative, right? Guys, we can manipulate this, this graph the same way we manipulate the other ones. What we can do is plus three. That guy, it's gonna go up three, right? Because this is our up down. What if I did it like this? Y equals absolute value X minus two plus three, right? I'm being very clear that this, this radical ends at two, okay? Again, opposite of this is positive two, and then regular this is three. So our, our vertex, for the lack of a better term, I'm just gonna call these all vertex, where they start. You're gonna go over two, up three, and it's gonna be that same pattern. See this original pattern was over one, up one, over four, up two. So over one, up one, over four, one, two, three, four, up two. So it's gonna look like this. I am not picky about these guys. So if you just wanna, you know, you gotta ballpark it, make it look, look reasonable, right? Um, again, though, if we put a two in front of here, y equals two root x, right? Uh, and using Desmos, you can, you can uh, view all of these on Desmos. And what I like about that is you can put like y equals root x and then this and then compare the way those two work, right? So if you do it like this, you'll see that this is gonna tell us if it's skinny or, or like if it's uh, up a little bit higher or if it's down, just like the slope of a line, okay? So that works the same way. All right, so, uh, so yes, the other parent graph that I want you to know then is y equals square root of x. So make sure you have that one down. So now we have y equals 
x, y equals x squared, y equals absolute value of x, y equals uh, square root of x, right? So these are, our, these are what we have so far, and they can all be manipulated the same way. A uh, couple more. y equals 1 over x, 1 over x. All right, you guys, so while I was recording this, somebody came to the door and wanted to see my house. I'm selling my house right now because it's my tutoring business. I need a bigger house that can accommodate. Anyway, so it's, I paused it like 40 minutes ago and I'm sorry, I'm just jumping back in. Um, but I apologize. So we're gonna start one, y equals one over x, guys. And if you, like I said, you can go to Desmos and look these guys up. However, let's talk about this. This is gonna be your first introduction to asymptotes. Asymptotes are things, asym, oh, oh, tote, asymptote. What it is, is a line that your graph can never cross. And this is gonna be our very first one because guys, if I put a zero in for X, what happens? Undefined, I can never divide by zero, never divide by zero. So if I did an X, Y chart for this guy, I would have zero, negative one, negative two, uh, one and two. So again, zero undefined, I can't do anything. It's not gonna be zero, because one divided by zero is not zero. So if I put a negative one here, one divided by negative one is gonna be negative one. If I put a negative two here, I'm gonna have negative one half. If I put a one here, I'm gonna have one. If I put a two here, I'm gonna have one half. So let's go ahead and graph those guys. All right, so taking a look at this, um, you would graph, over one, up one, over negative one, up negative one, right? Um, over negative two, uh, oops, I was supposed to be down, sorry, right there. I'm like, wait, that doesn't look right. Over negative two, down negative one half. Over two, up one half, over two, up one half. Um, now, if I put, put in a negative, or if I put in a one half here, let's talk about that. That gives me a complex fraction here. One divided by one half, right? Fraction divided by fraction, complex, wonky fraction. The way that we do this is we multiply both the top and bottom by the reciprocal. These cancel out, these cancel out. But what I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top, right? One times two over one is just two. So if I were to have one half, and guys, my X, Y charts are never in order, so um, it's totally okay if yours aren't either. Um, we would have one half over two. Over one half up two. So do you see how this is starting to take shape? The way that this guy is gonna look is it's gonna go real close to zero here and like this. Notice it's never crossing this axis or the other one. That's because we can never, um, I will never be, that was kind of dreadful looking there, but um, I will never be able to put anything in this equation to get y to equal zero, right? Because if I put zero here, that's undefined. Um, I can get real, you can see I'm getting real close. I would get like one half, right? If I put in a two, if I put in a three, that would be one third. If I put in 50, that would be one fiftieth, which is still getting real close to that zero, but never actually touching it. Um, so these are called your asymptotes. Anyway, the point of this is, this is your parent graph for this guy right here, this y equals one over x. Again, it's gonna be the same idea, the way that we're able to manipulate this, moving it up and down, and we'll get more into that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that that's, a, that's another parent graph. Okay, so with all of that said, I hope that that, makes, uh, that clarifies your parent graphs a little bit better. Make sure that you know um, the ones that I wrote, right? y equals x y equals x squared, y equals absolute value of x, y equals uh, square root of x was the other one we talked about, right? Uh, and then we'll talk, so these aren't our only parent graphs, there's this one, y equals uh, one over x, but we'll talk more about that one later. But these are the primary ones that you're gonna work with for right now. Then there's a couple of other parent functions that we'll talk about, like y equals cube root of x, y equals x to the third, right? Those are some other ones that we'll eventually get into. But for right now, these guys are all related because that's how we manipulate them. Hopefully this makes sense, okay? Uh, I will see you guys in class. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much.